Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Raw Reaction Show. I'm your host, Glenn Thomas, as always, one for the Wrestling Marks of Excellence, which you can find on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, as well as YouTube. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, that bell notification, leave us a five-star review. You can also come and comment on this video as we'll be talking about this past Monday Night Raw, which we saw Monday Night Raw start with a Mark, Dr. Martin Luther King package, as, w as WWE always does on Martin Luther King Day. We know that Dr. Martin Luther King is one of Vince McMahon's favorite uh people in history and so uh, throughout the show we saw a lot of superstars whether it was Seth Rollins whether it was Dean Ambrose uh quote Dr. Martin Luther King I think WWE did a good job with the package uh, but let's get on to the show which was Monday Night Raw the go home show before this weekend's Royal Rumble and the show started off with the the, the advocate as well as the universal champion Brock Lesnar uh, in the ring talking about this his this Sunday's match that he has an upcoming match against Finn Balor. Uh, didn't take long for the chairman, Vince McMahon, to come out. Uh, didn't take long for even Finn Balor to come out. But one thing that may make, make mention of, that in this opening promo, hey, Paul Heyman said Beast is not scared of anyone. He's taking anybody and everyone to sue Plex City, and it does not matter who it is. Uh, we saw Braun Strowman come down to the ring and just cry a little bit or whine a little bit about how he was fined $100,000 and how his title opportunity at the Royal Rumble was taken away from him and how he's not scared of Brock Lesnar. No way, no shape, no form, no how. But Vince McMahon told, put the beast, I uh, put Braun Strowman in his place very quickly. He said, you should have been fired, so we don't want to hear none of that. Then comes out Finn Balor. Finn Balor comes out, and you know what happens here. If you watch Monday Night Raw for a long, long time, we end up having a match between Braun Strowman and Finn Balor. Balor. Now this match went to a no contest because Brock Lesnar got involved as well as Paul Heyman uh, got involved as well. And we saw the Beast, F5 Finn Balor. Also we saw the Beast destroy a little bit Braun Strowman. Brock Lesnar is on his way to the Royal Roma as your Universal Champion. Would like it or hate it. The fans let Brock Lesnar know how they feel. Uh, and o the Oklahoma fans let Brock Lesnar know how they feel throughout the show. Felt throughout the show. They booed him when he did his promos. They booed him at the end of the, uh, end of the match. Braun, uh, Brock Lesnar could not get any love from the Oklahoma City crowd at all on this past Monday night. Let me know what your thoughts are. Are you happy that Brock Lesnar is still the Universal Champion? Would you like to see him lose to the Finn Balor? Or would you be fine with him holding on to the championship until WrestleMania, dropping it to whoever it may be? And maybe we won't find out until, so we won't find out until Sunday because the winner of the Royal Rumble has the opportunity at a championship of their choosing. So well, let's see, it will be a raw person who wins the universe, wins the Royal Rumble this year uh, to take on maybe Brock Lesnar or Finn Balor, depends on who wins at the Royal Rumble. Uh, then we move on to Bobby Lashley, the new Intercontinental Champion in Apollo Crews. Good to see Apollo Crews uh, getting a lot of TV time on Monday Night Raw as well as talking a little bit. Bobby Lashley is your new Intercontinental Champion who won last week against Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. Uh, we saw Leo Rush coming out there holding the title. Said Bobby Lashley's not doing no open challenge. That's for kids. Bobby Lashley's gonna have a, a celebration. Bobby Lashley's gonna have a pose down. And this is where we get Apollo Cruz comes out and gives Bobby Lashley some props about winning the Intercontinental Championship. And you know, once again, know what happened. This is wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. This is professional wrestling. And these two end up having a match later on in the uh, in the these two end up having a match in the show. Uh, we saw that Leo Rush got involved here. And Apollo Cruz just launches Leo Rush on top of the Bobby Lashley. It's good to see Leo Rush. Uh, man, this guy right here can talk you into your seats. Love him or hate him. Uh, Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley are a good pair. They work for each other. The whole big man little thing. And we everybody said for years that Bobby Lashley needed a mouthpiece. And Leo Rush has been his mouthpiece for the last couple of months. And Bobby Lashley has gotten a push. Good to see that Bobby Lashley is no longer doing things like he did with Sami Zayn. But nonetheless, in the match, very good match back and forth. And Bobby Lashley picks up the win over Apollo Crews. It might be a little bit of a feud going, uh, going down the road. But Bobby Lashley will go into this Sunday as the Intercontinental Champion. No Intercontinental Championship match. But I'm going to give you a little bit of my snippet. My prediction for the Royal Rumble, I think Bobby Lashley will be one of the final four in the ring for the Royal Rumble, especially if Brock Lesnar defeats Finn Balor. I think Bobby Lashley will be one of the final four at the Royal Rumble. Give you our predictions this week on this ever this week's episode of the Wrestling Marks of Excellence, which you can go ahead and hit, go ahead and subscribe to on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, uh, wherever you get your social media, so you won't miss myself, my predictions as well as the Wizard Nephew Corey's predictions on this week's show. Uh, let's move on. We saw. 
Seth Rollins take on Drew McIntyre. Uh, good match here. But seen this match a couple times uh, throughout the last couple months on Monday Night Raw. I uh, wish WWE would sometimes not give us the same matches over and over again. Let it build up to what it is. Uh, this feud right here between Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins could be one that we see a little bit down the road for the Universal title uh, if WWE can get it right between now and WrestleMania. Uh, but nonetheless, they had a decent match going back and forth. One of the highlights of the show uh, was this match between Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. But Seth Rollins picks up the win. Uh, stole a win, if you want to say it, over Drew McIntyre. Uh, and Drew McIntyre was upset at the match. But nonetheless, the Kingslayer gets the win over the, over the Scottish Psychopath. Psychopath. And we move on. Then we saw the, as you want to say, heavy machinery, the appearance of heavy machinery uh, come to Monday Night Raw. We saw them a little bit last week during the moment of bliss. But this week they had some in-ring action. And the in-ring action will get the Ascension a very quick match against the Ascension. Uh, heavy machinery picks up the win here. Good to see them in the tag team division on Monday Night Raw. Maybe this tag team with the Heavy Machinery joining the tag team vision on Monday Night Raw, it may get a spark because we haven't seen AOP in a while. And when speaking of tag teams, the revival after speaking to Vince McMahon in the back get a tag team title shot against Bobby Roode and Chad Gable who came out with matching tights, matching robes, looking like a true tag team. Now, we all, a lot of people say it, and I'm going to say it again, Bobby Roode is a little bit better than being a tag team wrestler with Chad Gable, but, hey, he is right now employed by the WWE, and this is what the WWE wants him to do. He ain't complaining, and they are the tag team champions. We know that the Revival has asked for the release, which by by now, if you have not figured out, WWE is not giving the Revival their release. Uh, rumors have it, and some have been confirmed that the revival contract with the WWE is not up until April 2020. So, with anything, the revival will be part of the WWE brand until April 2020, whether it be on TV or off TV. The WWE, remember what the WWE did to Neville, let his contract run out. And he just wasn't on TV. They could do that to revival if they push the issue. But nonetheless, the revival lose to Chad Gable and Bobby Roode in this tag team title match after trying to cheat after cheat after cheat well we had a special guest referee which was Kurt Hawkins uh, who every time they try to cheat caught them and Kurt Hawkins went right down the book as the referee unlike those that were in the New Orleans Saints in the Los Angeles Ram contest uh, Kurt Hawkins didn't mind throwing the flag when he saw some foul play Kurt Hawkins which led to this led to revival beating up on Kurt Hawkins, and we saw, that's right, Woo 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 himself, Zack Ryder, make his appearance on Monday Night Raw. Mind you, Zack Ryder had not appeared on Monday Night Raw in a long while. He went 51 weeks in 2018 not appearing on Raw, and finally got appearance on Raw the 52nd week of the year. Now we're already into the third week of January of the new year, and we already seen Zack Ryder on Monday Night Raw. Congratulations to Zack Ryder for being on Monday Night Raw, but not nah, nonetheless, Zack Ryder attacks the Revival, and him and Kirk Hawkins may renew their friendship. Well, we know their friendship is still intact. May renew, renew their tag team ships. If you don't remember, they were used to be the Edge Heads, and they Edge Heads, and they were former WWE tag team champions. So we may see a feud between the Revival and Scott Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Go ahead, and check out their podcast. Podcast is pretty good. You'll find that on iTunes as well as Google Play and Stitcher. Uh, check it out. But the revival with the WWE, I do see them being tag team champions somewhere down the road. Uh, but right now, they're not. If you really want to call this segment, this segment is probably the AEW segment. Because all these guys could be in the AEW, but no time soon. We move on. And then we saw Baron Corbin take on Elias. Who wants to walk with Elias, not me, because Elias hasn't picked up too many wins on TV as of late, and he, he didn't pick up the win on this past Monday night, where Baron Corbin picked up the win over Elias after he got, Elias got hit with the end of days. Now, this is kind of made me scratch my head. Baron Corbin picking up wins. Why? He's just been fired as general manager. What are we going to do with Barry Corbin? Uh, yeah, Bobby, Barry Corbin, to me, is good where he was at. Should have been continuing to be in the raw general manager, but to be a major player picking up wins over Elias. We keep throwing Baron Corbin into things. He's not going to win the Royal Rumble. He shouldn't be in the match last week for the Universal title pitcher. Baron Corbin is right now one of your 
best mid carder. It's a mid carder at best. Um, but nonetheless, WWE keeps pushing him on TV. Keep picking up wins, and maybe Baron Corbin will be a player, a major player later on. Only time will tell. But the booze of the crowd really let you know that Baron Corbin doesn't have respect of the universe. And we move on to the moment of bliss, the moment of bliss segment where Alexa Bliss comes out and tells, and basically named the 21 women that were going to be in the WWE Royal Women's Royal Rumble. She lets them know, look, we're not going to have any fights on my stage, which we all know if you watch wrestling long enough again, that they broke out into a fight. But the major announcement that came from this was that Alexa Bliss herself made mention that she has been cleared, finally cleared since October. Since she suffered a concussion from Ronda Rousey, the Alexa Bliss will make a return at the Royal Rumble and will be a participant in the Women's Royal Rumble this year. Uh, Alexa Bliss, to me, I thought the WWE should have held off on this, would have got a bigger pop and a bigger emotional reaction from myself and many other fans if they would have just let Alexa Bliss come out during the Royal Rumble at maybe number 20, number 15, even number 30 and her music hits and she comes out and what kind of pop would she have got there? I thought it would have been a great moment but then we got another reveal on the moment of bliss and that was none other than a lady herself miss lacy evans miss lacy evans comes out and says that she is also throwing her hat into the royal rumble and she's such a lady and she's not like the other women in the wwe hey it's good to see lacy evans up on the main roster finally whether she be on raw or smackdown only time would tell but we do know that she will be in this weekend's women's royal rumble and she may have opportunity to show the WWE, she will have opportunity to show the WWE Universe who don't know about her, what she's all about. Hey, right now we have 23 women in the Royal Rumble. Currently, 23 women that are currently in the Royal Rumble. That leaves, leaves seven slots for surprises, and we only time will see, tell what surprises we'll get from the WWE in the Women's Royal Rumble. Then we move on to the main event of the night, which we saw Ronda Rousey and Natalya take on Sasha Banks and Bailey. Look at the matching uniforms by the Boston Hug connection here. And before the match even got started, Ronda Rousey and Sasha Banks went back and forth, back and forth about their match this weekend at the Royal Rumble. This match right here will be one of the better matches on the show, if not still the show. I think we'll see the Sasha Banks from NXT that we saw uh, years ago from the NXT TakeOver. Not the Sasha Banks we saw for the last six months arguing and fussing with Bailey and semi-lesbian angle and all this other stuff that's been going on with Sasha Banks. But we'll see the Sasha Banks that was whooping Bailey's butt in X NXT. The Sasha Banks and that was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Charlotte flair when she first came into the wwe and we will also see how ronda rousey has progressed in with in less than a year because this match right here is going to test her physically it's going to test her mentally and let's see if she can keep up with the more talented and more technical sasha banks in this uh, in the ring from this sunday on royal rumble but we got nonetheless let's get on to the match the match here we went back and forth got a hot tag here but at the end of the day it was sasha banks making natalia tap out that's right natalia tapped to the hey, to the bank statement and will this be what we see this Sunday where will Ronda Rousey tap to the bank statement only time will tell I give you my predictions as I mentioned this week on the Wrestling Marks of Excellence which you can see once again what you can hear on Fox Sports Radio 1340 AM 96.9 FM or you can go ahead and subscribe to iTunes Google Play Stitcher YouTube go ahead and hit that bell notification and that subscribe button so you won't miss our predictions this week myself and Nephew Corey as we talk about the Royal Rumble, but the end of this match saw a little where these two women had to be separated yet again. This match right here is gonna be fire, as I mentioned earlier. It will not only be a wrestling match, but it, I think it will be a little bit of a brawl. At the end of the day, the women right now are the top in WWE, and they get closed another Monday Night Raw. All in all, the go home show, I give it a thumbs up. Once again, ladies and gentlemen. Glenn Thomas here, one fourth of the Wrestling Marks of Excellence. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and make sure you listen to the Wrestling Marks of Excellence this Thursday night. Or catch us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Once again, hit the subscribe button, leave a five star, leave a five star, leave us five stars. Also, leave us a comment below. Once again, if you're not confirmed, consider yourself denied. End of story.